um, Orchard 2. Seven days. Oh, 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 oh. No, no, because we didn't have a meeting last week. So, so actually, what is new from the meet, from the meeting is uh, Virus Trinity we submitted three PRs. Uh, media processing thinks dimension format in filter description. Let me see what it was. Apparently, it was uh, with an eight were on the opposite in the description. Um, scale option to resize filter. So now there is a new parameter you can pass in the filters, which is the scale, the downscale, upscale, both upscale canvas. These are options on image image resizer. So now they are available also in the uh, in the filters. Um, base UL setting is not set. This could be not set in some context, so now it won't fail, it will just go on and get a default one. Um, it won't fail anymore. You see localhost by default, if nothing is defined. So at, at least it won't fail the setup. So that's it, Orchard 2. Going back now. So 14 days we had Jean Thierry working on Fluid View and it has been merged. So we'll see about it. So liquid views and uh, we have Antoine working on the bootstrap for a migration. I was about to merge it this morning, but I wanted to test it first. I want to ensure that uh, Sergio's OpenID module custom hack for Bootstrap still work, and the media also still works. I, or maybe you will just tell us, Antoine, that you've tried it and it will be fine. Um, so Alex working with Rustem on the users branch, and it's ready, I think. Um, so I'll see merging it too. So this is what master. So what we've done, so back parts I will show you, Brog recipe. So what we've done in um, the repo is that we created a dev branch and we are currently merging all the big pull requests on the dev branch to ensure everything works. And when it's stable, we match back to master. So Kevin uh, migrated OpenID to uh, ASP.NET Core 2.0. Mm, branch, branch, don't care. Um, this must be dev branch fixing some bugs while imagining all the PRs. Uh, bootstrap from, from uh, Antoine. Uh, what else? The thing here, Nick is working on APIs, so that will be a demo next week. Jean Thierry is working on Razor Pages, integrating it, it should be soon done. This is Nick, and I'm testing everything I can to ensure that it works so we can ship a beta in two days. Um, okay, uh, then. What did we merge? Turn it core to zero. So we merged um, net, net standard to zero. This is a new target for Orchard and it works. We merge liquid views. Um, what else did we merge? Liquid views and the agency, I will show you. And I think that's it for the demos. Okay, setup screen. So, first change I did, um, and I didn't ask anyone, <laughs> I removed the CMS recipe because there was no point 
it was just empty with nothing and it was using a demo module which is buggy and so yeah so just useful recipes now so after the service the same as before it's just that it has tenants module so you can when you run that you have a default standard theme like this one no content no home page you just go to the admin and you can create tenants okay let's say that's the purpose to have a a default host for multiple tenants okay um, blog to create a blog it's using the blog theme to create a blog with one blog and one blog post and one query also to have a widget to have a recent blog post agency is a recipe and a theme to have a um, corporate website or a web agency let's say I will show it uh, now yes I will use this one so I take agency I call it demo I use SQLite Account as usual. Okay, and I finish setup. And this is the site that is created. And what I like about this site is the site is that it's nice, it's ready to use, it has lots of content already. So it's like a, the goal is to have something that is ready to use, that can be used as a tutorial, that you can use to demo or to play with. It has lots of content, even if it's random content. It has content, it has media items, uh, different content types, uh, different kind of layouts, uh, and I think it's nice. Um, it's a single page. So when you I should use them, pictures of us instead of those people. <laughs> we could, but these ones are free and the full site is MIT, so I don't, I don't want to to change the, the theme which is MIT and which contains everything here. I think that's better. And even for next time we want to upgrade the site, it will be easier. But yeah, who cares? We'll see. So the, um, so I think this is, a, this is cool. And uh, anyone could say, well, I want my website to look like this. And it's nice. Okay, so you could use it as a startup point. Um, so that's it. What is interesting also is, so this is one, one page, okay? And all the content you see here on this page is actually stored in one content item. Well, one document, which is comprised of multiple content items, but it's one thing. So it's super fast. So here I'm running a debug mode. So it's 10 milliseconds, but if I was on release, it will be faster and it sustained like 2000 requests per second without any issue, without cache. If you enable the cache, then it's, it's cheating. It's hundreds of thousands of requests, but um, it works. Okay, it's, it's nice. But the, the nicest thing here is how you manage the content. So when you go, when you want to show the, the possibilities of Orchard in terms of content editing, I think it's nice if I go put it on the, okay, not yet. So I will go to content items and there is, <clears throat> there is a main menu, but it's not used. I could just not create it during the recipe. That might be easier. There is one content item, a main content item, which is called agency start bootstrap theme. This is the name of the content item. It can be changed. Um, and this is of a type called landing page. So this thing here, this is the home page of type landing page. And there is a content type called landing page. Okay, this is one, there is one instance which is set as the home page. This content item is a current home page. Okay. Um, and then <clears throat> you can see different sections, menu items, services, <clears throat> portfolio, which is a set of projects, about section, which is a set of milestones, team, which is a set of team members. And you see here three team member, because if I go on let me open the preview and I will put it on the right and this one on the left. So if I go at the bottom, three team members and team member is a content type. Client is a content type. Milestone is a content type. Project is a content type. Service is a content type. Menu item is a content type. And all these content types <coughs> have content items. And each content item here is owned by the landing page. That's why everything is loaded with one SQL query. So um, 
the nice demo effect here is that you go to services and you want to change your services. So you go to services, you have service, okay, three services. If I expand, you can see the title, the body, and a class, an icon class that is used for this thing. Okay, and uh, if you want e-commerce to be second, then you take e-commerce, you put it second, and you drop. And live on the right, you can see the the result. So first, very nice uh, live editing experience and and and, and um, um, real preview. Uh, but that that you know this this has been there for four weeks now. Uh, and if you want to change responsive design or responsive or mobile design you see it works also when you when you edit so that's good um that's the that's the first thing which is nice because then you have a company you have services they are not these ones well you just go to the edit page and you change them and you don't need more this the design is nice you can just change the content it's already set up with some interesting content in mind okay you can just change that same thing for the portfolio. The portfolio is another way to display items. In this case, thumbnails with media. And when you click on uh, a project, you see a, a pop-up with the detail of the of the case study or the customer or whatever. And same thing, project, you edit. There's title, a body, an image. And every time I show it, I remember I forgot to do it. So when I will remove the image, it won't live edit the page because I forgot to hook to the delete event. But if I select another image from the library and I take this one, okay, you see live, you see the difference. And I haven't saved anything. It's just not even draft. I'm just editing a page and I can see how it will look like. And I can move things around. Okay. And if I want to try the responsiveness of the site, I can just do that. And that's nice. Okay. So that's the idea. We have about, about is interesting because the layout will handle the left, right thing and liquid helps for that. So if I move this one after, done. And if you don't want the about section, you just remove all the milestones and automatically will also remove the, the title of about. Okay. So because maybe you don't want a, a set of milestones in your homepage, you don't care. So just remove that delete one by one and it should work. Let's see if it works. If I delete that. Uh, okay, so it works there. This one too. This one too. And as I delete the last one, this section should also go away. It goes away. Okay. Um, and if you had, a, and you see each section here, this one can add a project, this one can add a milestone. And if I had a milestone, I can type stuff and it will show off. Okay. So this works. Um, Team member, same thing, very easy. An image, picture, a single one, you can type uh, main. Okay. Lead designer. Oh. Big stuff. Okay, you, and you have Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn um, handlers, and it will work because the template takes care of that. So that's good. Um, Clients, they are just images. And this contact form is part of the template, but is not hooked to anything. The goal being that when we have resort pages, we can create a simple resort page to send an email. Or you can just remove it from the from template. And then let's say you, so this is just text from the template. It could be different. We'll talk about it. And uh, menu items also are rendered in this page. Okay, um, so if I go now, I will close this window. If I go to design templates, the recipe will also create a custom template for the landing page. So the view itself, the layout is part of the theme, but this view is part of the, of the content so that you can edit the template of the landing page without having to, to change the, the theme itself. You can just go to the edition here and do that. So if I go to preview for a template, and you should also have seen that in previous meeting. So this is a preview for the template. So I can go on any page I want, okay? And I go on the home page. And now 
you want to change um, the services section. Maybe you want these guys to be, so right now it's for each service you want here, where is that, the name, the title of the service. Maybe you want an H3. So I go type H3 and H3 and I have an H3. So I can see directly the impact of my template on my website and everywhere. Okay, I'm not editing the content now, I'm editing the, the template. Or if you want that to be encoded, you just remove that and it will be encoded, but there was no HTML. Or if you want it bold, you go there, B, slash B, and you have it bold, okay? So it's very, very nice to be able to edit directly. And to do quick changes on the things you see here, like for instance, this text, Rem Ipsum, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is where, this is this text, like, Okay, and you can change directly the text. And you don't like the terms portfolio, you can say projects. Okay. Recent projects, for instance. So so I like the experience. And so I like the theme is nice. The experience, the editing experience of the content is nice and can be also demoed. And you can change the content very quickly without having to build a new website. You can change the template to your taste, like if you don't like the colors or the titles or whatever, you can you can just change them. Um, you don't like the con the contact us section, but we just go and delete that. Where is it? Contact. It's removed. Done. It's gone. So yeah, I think that's cool. Um, questions, comments. So Robert Saska asked. Can style sheets be changed as easily? They are part of the theme. So no, unless the theme would expose that uh, an editor to edit the style sheet. But it's a, I fair, it's a fair question. I wouldn't go up to that level. At this point, maybe you want to edit the style sheet in the file system to edit the theme because you might, it, for instance, there will be some girl pipeline bind, bundling and everything. So it's not as easy if you want something optimal. But we could have, yes, a, a theme that does that. Not this one, we could have this one, but I would not suggest to do that, but it's doable. We do that for some other blogs and what blogs has been at. So it's not a technical issue. It's just a design decision. Like, do we want to let people do that? It depends on the site, and also f f then we need to enable cache for that because if we r the CSS will have to be cached in memory and served not from the file system, so it has to be uh, cached correctly. Um, you know, a, a feature we could provide is a way to create custom files, virtual files, that will edit from the admin, and uh, when you request for a static file with a URL it will find this file even if it's not a file. See what I mean? A virtual file provider that, that, that will do that. And then it will be a reusable module for anything. And then you could target any file in any location. It will just be virtual. And you can, that, that would be a, maybe a better solution as it will solve more than just the CSS files, templates and everything. If you want to add any file somewhere, even, a, I don't know, an SVG file, a JSON file, anything, you could create it from the, from the editor, that will be doable, but yeah. Um, so uh, being able to adjust types of deploying, another option, and this is why I, I, what I want to show you uh, next, is instead of exposing the CSS directly, maybe we just want some settings to the, to the, to the site, like this text could be a setting, this text could be a setting, uh, the background image here could be a setting. The, the color of the background text here could be a setting. The background image could be a setting. And that's about all you want to change. If you want to change more things, maybe you will just go to the CSS and all the template and change the template. But if you want to change some small settings like this, then I will show you a new feature. Um, 
It's called custom setting. So if I go to settings right now, I have general and layers, which are provided by the different modules, the layers modules and the default settings. But let's say I want for this theme um, custom ones without having to code anything. What you can do now, and the module now is enabled with a new, let's see, custom settings. Yes, it's enabled. So if I go to content types, what I can do is create a type that I will call uh, agency agency settings. Okay, agency settings, create. And I will give it, um, what can it be? Uh, a body, because that's useful. I could give it a title, but I will just give it a body. I will remove all these metadata and give it a stereotype named custom settings and save it. And from that, because I created a type named well, of stereotype custom settings, it's not a content item type, it's a custom settings type. So when I go to design settings, I can see now agency settings. And if I try to edit that thing, it will show me a body because I said a set, uh, an agency settings has a body. And if I go create a field, um, where is that? Uh, agency settings. Let's say I want to add a field I will call a media field, I will call back header, header image, okay? Save. And I will say, I just want, it's required, no, it's not required, I just want one, so I don't check multiple, and I save it. Um, I want my, okay, field can be at the top. So I go to design settings, agency settings. Now I can see header image. So I can edit header image, select another, header image, what can I take? Uh, I will try this one, it's, it doesn't fit correctly, it's, not, it's a bad example, but I could take any, I can upload one. Let's see if it works. Uh, okay. Uh, looks like there's a bug, I hate that. So it didn't work, or did it create a kitten folder? No, it failed, bug. Okay, I will add it here. Upload files, uh, pictures, kittens, I will take this one, open, it's there, I select it. Okay, so I set in my kitten, this is an image, this is my files. This is a body, save. And now I will go to my template here and the issue is that this, that's why we need to, to set, it, set it up correctly, maybe put some more things in the, in the template or be able to edit the CSS. This background image, I assume, is in the CSS because I don't see it here. I haven't seen that. Let's see. What is that? Are the elements elements so Sebastian um are you able to create a let's say just a base bootstrap theme and then uh override each theme within your override your base theme inside each tenant mm. i've seen this done before with in templates one with templates but <clears throat> yeah with templates you can do that you can have a template which overrides the tagging for any shape or any view and that template can be a CSHTML file? Yes, I, I can show you. Um, and that's actually what we're doing. I, uh, if you look. I can't find the image, but well, let's say you get it. So now I will just go back here. Let's see if I'm still, if it's still working. Yes, it's still working. So here, if I want to use the settings and change this text by the body of the settings, I can just Ah, so the name of the template is actually the alternate, yes. right? So here, yeah. 
So here it's nice to meet you. I can do site. So if I use site.name, it will be demo. Where is that? No, site.site name is demo. Okay. But what I want, and it, uh, you, you, it's, it's not um, a first class property of the site, which is site settings, and it's documented. It's what is in properties. And in properties that I type it, it's actually rendered, because I say render properties, it's rendering the the document here, which is bad, but in properties, there is something called um, agency settings. Okay, good. Which has a body part, which has a body. This is the body. And because it's HTML here, you want to pipe it to raw because you don't want to encode anything which will be already in HTML. Like if there was something encoded, you don't want to double encode it. You assume it's valid HTML inside, but that's a minor uh, thing to do. And then body part, and what you can do also is use the image. So if you want to use the image, then there is a, something which is not as nice. It's because site properties, agency settings. So I will close it to see that. And then this is a content item of type agency settings and all the fields of a type are using the same, the part with the same name as a type. So here to access the field, I need to do agency settings again, dot, and you can see here I have header image. So dot header image and I access to path dot path. And now this is an array. So I will just do dot first. And you see, I have the URL now. And if I want to render an image, then I will pipe it to media uh, URL to EMIMG tag. And then I have the image here. Okay. You could use it in a style background or anything, but you have access to the, to the settings, just that, just the point. So if we want to go further with this idea of having a um, ready to use site, we could provide more, more settings, or we could provide some settings that would let the users not only edit the content, the template, but also the behavior or the, the design of the, of the file. That, that would be good maybe. Um, we just need to move the, the background here, which was in the CSS to the template here. I think it would be quite nice inside of the, in, in somewhere in here, uh, maybe at the top to be able to create another alternate based on something. Um, uh, do, you, do, you, do you, you see what I mean? You know, like in, um, what was, what do we used to do to create alternates inside of, a Orchard one style, you know, that thing that was down the bottom, it was almost like firebug. The shape, the shape, the tracing. shape tracing. Yeah. You know, there was a button to create the alternate. Oh, well, we have something I will show you. Maybe you missed it. Oh, okay. But, oh, so I found the, the element which had the background image. So you can just override it from the CSS into the HTML. That works too, after all. Site name dot properties dot agency settings, which is the content item, dot agency settings, which is the part containing the fields, dot header image, which is my field, dot path, the list of media images. I will take the first one. I will pipe it to a media URL because I want a URL. And properties. Properties, thank you. Properties. I need to close. It's closed. Interesting. Maybe, oh, I must have another typo, typo because there is nothing which is displayed. Oh, it's displayed, but it's black. background color black now i see this is a body and if i type this slash media so this is wrong that's why so what is wrong we had 
the URL out here. Site or oh, site name, sorry, site. Okay, that's it. And this is the URL. So if I do there and I will put it here, now I have my nice background. Isn't it cool? From the settings. So now you, we can, we could even ship it this way and let and put the default value of the default background um, in the in the recipe and then people can just go to design settings and change it and that will be done so if i now if i save this template as my template and i will go on the site page put it on the right so you see it works with these settings it's responsive it's beautiful because the theme is very nice and i will just go to settings agency settings remove that select another one uh, logos no portfolio i take this one or this one i say okay and i save and i refresh my page and i have a different header looks cool right i like it uh, that's i think that's a nice story to let editors change the content and have a ready to use website and we can do the same thing for the uh, taglines and section names if we want the we can put everything into settings if we don't want to change the template to just change some text up to to us to decide so that's the first <clears throat> that's uh, the thing i wanted to show you. Uh, questions did i miss anything sure ship tracing oh yes what i wanted to show you um nick is that when you go to content definition content types let's close that if you want to provide a custom template for a project for instance even though we don't use that right now you go to edit and on, on edit templates you can say template for project content item in detail view in summary view and when you click it goes to the template editor with the correct alternate that's not the same as shape tracing but that will help a lot to know what template to create yeah that will help i was more i was thinking more along the lines of um uh when you've got a multilingual site um you normally have overrides per language um, mm -hmm. but yeah i mean we haven't got multi we haven't got no. localization yet. decent and many things but yeah that's what you will do here so this one is just the alternate for the content landing page if it was a view it will be taken but if now there is a template it will take this one okay that makes sense that's good um so that's it um what else so settings custom settings uh, nothing new here nothing new here what did i say Okay. So we're just in integration. We're just about to merge uh, that dev branch into master once we're happy. And yes. then, okay. Okay. There so was, oh, yep. there was work around localization um, by someone. Did we, by Luke, I believe its name was? Lucas. Lucas. Lewis. And I, <clears throat> Lucas. Lucas. And I, yes, I committed on this pull request to finish the, the job. Uh, we just need to try if it works. Do you think we should maybe merge that in as well? If it, works, too much? if it works, but nobody has tried it. I'm, I did the changes from GitHub. I didn't even download because I made some comments on the PR and it could not work on that. So I did the comments that I wanted. I, I applied the comments I wanted. So now we just need to. Because the to last test comment it. that you made was a to do. And that to do was merged. The um, last thing that I would like is I made a comment, but I don't understand what I meant. That's the issue. <laughs> so oh, it's okay. not, it's, yeah, I can't, I, I don't understand what I meant by that. So, I mean, we should just try it to see if it works. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, maybe I'm sure it will work. So let's let's see if it works. Uh, so I showed um, the agency and custom settings. Oh, <clears throat> something also um, I like to emphasize is that uh, I think we should ship. So we have a blog recipe that creates a blog uh, engine, a, bl a blog a website. We have an agent web agency website, which is like for any company that provide services and has a portfolio, which is a lot of companies. Um, we might want a, a third one or a fourth one. I like this idea of providing um, ready to use vertical websites because first it lets people have ready to use websites. Most of the time it will be something that you can use out of the box and it will be fine. Like the blog theme is very nice and you can use it as your blog and you won't be ashamed of that. It's a very nice theme. Same thing for the agency, you could use as is and you will not be ashamed and you have content and it's ready to use. You can just edit the content, it works. So time to market is huge. And also it allows us to provide uh, examples on, on themes, on uh, content uh, organization, so people can can understand how the site was built and uh, and feel confidence on doing the same thing for their own sites. And we should probably create uh, an article for each of these recipes to explain how the recipe works, which modules are used, how they are used, how the themes was the theme was done, how the content is organized. Because there are many ways also to organize the content here in the agency. I created one. Oh, I didn't show you how I did that. Did I? I didn't. So the content type itself, the landing page, is as a title part and a throughout part, which is standard. And then these parts, these sections actually, they are um, of the same part type. They are named part of the part called bag. Okay, and I showed it um, at some point early weeks and this the settings for this back part here is a name menu items a description and what type of content item it can contain here I just said only menu item this is why when I say add it only shows me item a portfolio is a, the name of a back part so let's let me show you I do add name part I select bag because right now this is the only nameable part you can use you can say for instance projects okay you can hit add a description and then on the setting you will select that a portfolio well or project is a list of project and or article and or page and so on so here just project so and in the end that's why um, when you go to the editor it will render this part like portfolio by just showing you can add an item to it which is just a project and it will embed it will go and fetch the the editor for this custom content type and this content type if i go to content types the project content type is not creatable it's part of something else it has fields a category which is a text field an image and some parts title body project which is the field so title and body okay so this is pretty standard and then you can compose a content item with other content items uh, compared to list, list just references other content items. A bag contains, owns content items. So it will aggregate, it's an aggregate route. And, and this way you can just have in one editor all the things and when you load the item, you just have everything when you load the item. Um, what we could have done is just say, um, um, what could we have done? We could have just used widgets with a custom type for a widget like let me show you uh, if i go there this could be a widget type with its custom uh, template which will be called maybe uh, i don't know um, elements with bubbles i don't know and then portfolio widget where you select uh, projects and you and you can edit that and then um, timeline widget and then you could add this timeline widget in many places of the page. So it will just be a different organization of the content. Uh, but here the decision was to do it this way and that's how it works. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was saying maybe a tutorial for each theme to explain how it's done, which theme, why, and how the theme was done, how, it's, how the theming works, and that would be nice. So as a tutorial, as a ready to use website, I think that's good. Um, 
and 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 that's it so liquid views just to show you that Chantieri uh, we match his request so now liquid can be used in dynamic templates from the admin it can also be used for any view in a theme and he actually migrated the blog theme to use only liquid files so if i go to views you won't see cshtml you just use you will just see dot liquid and if we look at the layout uh, you can see here there are some tags that have to be documented uh, that lets you do everything that you could do in razor page but that might be less or easier uh, to do in liquid and in razor because that might scare people to do it in razor knowing it's sharp might be easier to just call some custom tags somewhere in the views and and everything works you see here model.classes join space well you don't have to know that there is a string dot join an array and a comma so it's loosely typed and it's standard liquid template so there is a documentation for shopify for instance so designer might be uh, more at ease with uh, with that you see loops they are less cryptic than a c sharp loop so that that might be a solution for designers to to choose but you can mix and match uh, liquid cshml all you want okay that's that's the view branch which has been merged you can have liquid views and it's independent from liquid templates same engine but different ways of using it so that's the idea it's a shame uh, we don't have intellisense for this stuff but i guess you can't right you can't it's all dynamic well you could not have it well what you can have is syntax highlight well no uh colorization I mean, if you look at if you look at layout.liquid again it just looks colorization at least we could have colorization yeah and honestly maybe there is a plugin for visual studio that does that in vs code for instance it will work let me let me try that open containing folder and i will open it with vs code so vs code is supposed to understand liquid it, you see it finds it's liquid because it assigns the Shopify icon but it doesn't colorize it which is kind of sad mm -hmm. there must be some plugin for that we can do it in the admin we can colorize it so templates you see it's colorized what do we use is that a uh, code mirror yes okay. and there is a script for liquid okay um yeah so maybe <clears throat> so oh a note about where i found the themes i already mentioned that but good to re repeat it so it's start bootstrap start bootstrap. this is a website which provides some themes not that many but they are good and they are all on MIT license. Everything is MIT, which means we can <clears throat> reuse them, reship them. And what I did is that for the, the agency, um, it's better also for the tutorial. I just took all the content from the theme that you can download in the content folder. This is what is shipped from the theme. So we embed the license and everything the readme so people are not lost. This is the exact I just copy pasted the theme there okay and then the layout here i just took their index.cshtml sorry and i replaced whatever had to be dynamic with our tags from razor it could be liquid okay very that easy that was it and that's it and then i took the rest of the index cshtml uh, the index html into the content landing page uh, te template and replace the static thing by liquid tags so you can see here navigation and you can see it's repeating the menu items i just did a for loop over our content item to render that so that's a super easy super super easy um, that's why we need a tutorial to explain that how to take a theme copy it, a template on the internet copy it as a theme changed one or two files and you have it running and then how to model the content by explaining how to detect what content types you need and and with one or two examples like these people will uh, will be able to start easily and to understand how it works to go further 
Um, oh, and it has a footer, so I made a widget just to show how to use widgets um, for the. We use their version of jQuery. Is that what we're going? Is that yeah. the way we're looking at? Yeah, I'm using whatever the ship, and they are using Bootstrap four actually. Uh, they updated it, so I updated it yesterday. So if you look at the at the top, no, if I look at the readme. So do we think that's the best way to that's that's the way that we should go, isn't it? We should use we should just bundle the version of jQuery that theme uses into there and and be done with it. For, that's the easiest way for making a custom theme. Yeah, then it's up than... to the, then just to ex, to have something that works to make it easy to understand how it works and to make it easy to build themes. Then a developer can decide. No, I want to use this other CDN version of Bootstrap and not serve it from my server. And then they will change the theme. Not my concern. We yeah. can't. We can't have. There are one thousand ways to do to do that. We are just taking the most straightforward one and to make them understand how it works. And if they want to change it, they can understand. They want to change it. They just replace this URL, write something else. Did you see that? Because in version in Orchard One, most people did you know script dot require jQuery, and, and that's so fine. every yeah. time you upgrade Orchard, you the the biggest one of the biggest changes is all the dependencies. But if we're saying that we're going to the be, our, the way that you should do it is to bundle the dependencies in the theme and just be done with it, then the upgrade process is going to be a lot easier for I'm people. Not sure, that's their way. That's her way. And to no, be well, that's the way that everyone, most people I've seen do it. Um, yep. So it sounds like this is a much better way. Fluid project, of, yes, the liquid thing. Yeah, I made fluid just because of that. I made fluid because the dot liquid project was too slow. It was using well, it's using regular expressions everywhere, and then it, it was impacting on the perf. And because I'm dumb, and it, I didn't write the code, I'm like I will write it, and I made it faster. So that's why I did that. It's fle more flexible and it's faster. Um, so um, agency and where is where is this website? So very nice website and um, they have other ones. I'm trying to be clever in the choice. Um, so this is the theme we are using for the blog. Uh, we might want to update it also the same way I did for agency. It will be easy. Um, this is the one here I'm using for the agency. Some others are. Not nice, or doesn't add don't add any value compared to the agency. Uh, this one might be different. I kind of like it because it's for an app, so it might be also a nice target for uh, for for us to say, okay, you you made an app or a product, you just want a, a single page to show that. This is yeah, a few images, some content with the features, links to store, and done. I mean, you want a site like this. But you don't want to go with a static site with a template that you have to generate every time from Git and deploy it wherever you want. No, you just create new application site and it's done. So I think we need to go with more um, things like this. That would be good. Um, and they're all free to use themes. They are completely MIT. Yes, yes, completely. That's the nice thing also with that. So if I well, let me close that. If I go to here Visual Studio, README, they used not to be MIT, but then they changed their mind. You see, MIT and the license is here. MIT, which means do whatever we want, mm -hmm. as long as there is a license with it. They also provide a Gulp file, so that's why I don't want to break anything because the Gulp file will do minification and everything. There is a package JSON, so you can you, you can just follow the theme tutorial, and even if it's updated someday, we can update it also. That's why it's nice. Yeah, it's really nice. So yeah, and uh, and doing something like this, I mean, takes two hours, and and I'm exaggerating, but I know the product, so it's easier for me. But and you have a, site, a, a recipe that you can use and reuse again and again and again to do and change the content and have permissions and have and super fast and okay that that's the idea so um, 
Yeah, that, that's uh, so the first time I did that, it was for me as also a, <clears throat> an exercise to to be sure that we can ship a beta that you can build a website with and to find the limitations. And I found limitations. I found lots of bugs that I fixed on the go. I found limitations that we didn't have a back part and I'm like, hey, we need that. So I made a back part and then, and so on and so forth. And and when I had everything working, I'm like, wow, that, that, was, that was good. So yeah, we should, yeah. I, I can do it publicly and then we can learn and record it. Maybe that would be interesting to see and to have also ideas from people and feedback. So if you want to do that, we can do that. We can do, um, we can set up the same hour for meeting and do the website all together and see, see how it works. Like a case study, like how, what's missing. Because when we demo that and when we try to do that, we see the issues and we ask the questions. We are like, why, why am I asking a question? And if we ask a question, then we should have the answering documentation so that the next time nobody is asking the, que the same question. That's the idea. Um, and that's why also, while I was doing the site, I was also adding in the document documentation what I was missing. Uh, last time when I demoed that to uh, Sipka and Antoine, I didn't know how to get the the settings from the, the in the template. So I just, now it's documented, it's now, ah, crap. So now if you go to the um, custom settings module and you go to the readme, which is automatically in documentation, you know how to use the properties. And for instance, if you have block settings, I show you how to access the body part of a block setting during the site. Okay, so oh, now, bec because I didn't know, so now I know I've write it down. Uh, that's the idea. So yes, uh, I'm not sure I will do the next one for the beta. It might be too close, but, uh, but definitely I will add more of, of these more vertical applications, ready to use applications, which can also be used as tutorials. As how do they do that? If, if they can do that, I can do that. That's, that's the goal. Um, copy and paste, whatever. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Custom settings, the standard to zero. So we have graded everything to an standard to zero. Some issues on the way, but everything should work now. Um, a few PRs to uh, merge, and then we are ready to go beta. And there are bugs, there are lots of things missing, but it's a beta, so it's expected. And we'll break everyone, but that's fine. At least we have something ready to use and that people can play and give feedback and feel confident about the, the platform. And also probably join the project because they can see now something is working and they can use it. So let's work on that too. Um, that's it. Questions, comments? It's about time. Sorry, I was late for 10 minutes and now we... Yeah, and lots of things to come, Nick. Yeah, lots of uh, lots of interesting things. Lots of yes, yeah, scenarios we can we can do. Um, okay, good. That's it. So next meeting will be on Tuesday. Um, I will see tomorrow on th or th sorry, next meeting on Thursday. Tomorrow on th or Thursday. Um, how we ship that, uh, we'll see uh, probably with Nick or some other guys on Gitter what's really blocking or missing the last minute decisions to to see how we ship the beta, uh, try to communicate also blog posts, Twitter and everything, um, but we'll talk about it before. Um, that's it. Uh, this new theme will probably be done after we ship the beta, making a video and a tutorial to, to do that. Uh, I'll set up something and people will be able to join if they want. Good, those are questions. Good to me. Good, thanks everyone. I'll see you Thursday or next week.